Hey Resolve users, it's T. Allen from Digital Vector Studios, and today I'm gonna to be working with some type in Resolve. So what I'm gonna to put together is something like this. It is titles with some kinematic typography, and so we're gonna animate this, and I'm gonna show you the basics and the tips on how to put this together quickly and efficiently right now. So I wanna start with covering something for the basic users out there who are coming over from Adobe products. And so the way Resolve works, it has different pages. And right now I'm in the edit page and I'm gonna start from left to right. It has these tabs at the bottom. And so we have the media page, we have the cut page, edit page, fusion page, color page, Fairlight page and the delivery page. And you can get to those by clicking on these icons or you can also hit shift and a number. We'll start with a number two to get to the media page, shift two. So this is the media page. I'm not gonna go through all these. This is the cut page and back to the edit page. You get the idea, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that we're in the edit page, we wanna to get to some text and text is really easy and great to work with in Resolve. Make sure that you have this effects library open in the upper left and you're gonna see these menus here down on this side. What we wanna to get to under toolbox is titles and on the upper menu up here under titles, we're gonna see a text plus. That's what I wanna use here. So go ahead and drag one of those over you can see it says title here. We'll go ahead and change that to resolve. And I'm gonna show you how to move this. So we're gonna just click this layout button up here to see this. If you don't see this menu, make sure this inspector is open on the right side here. This is the layout button. It's the second one over. And this is our X, Y position. If we raise that up, then we can move it up to a different point there. We can just copy another text plus over here. The other way we can get another text clip if we just wanna make a duplicate, we can hold down the Alt key on a Windows machine and just drag and drop it up by holding the Alt key and using the left mouse button. Okay, let's type in something different there. And so it's over top of it. I'll go ahead and hit layout here and I'll drag that down just below it. And I wanna make this kind of the width of everything about the same. So I'm gonna bring this size down and kind of match up those edges there. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I wanna go up a little bit with the layout, keep it pretty close here. All right, and so I want one more piece of text. This time I'll just drag another one over here. I've got it in place there. You can see it kind of in the middle there. I wanna go ahead and change this type. And I'm gonna move it down as well. Kind of hang it on the edge here. I also wanna change the size. Kind of keep those edges the same. I'm a little bit tight here under the second one, so I'm gonna bring that down just a bit. That looks pretty good. All right, so I have these three pieces of text in place now. And so we can do animation with text right here in the edit page, but I'm gonna show you some tips on how to make it a little bit better in the Fusion page in just a few minutes. Now I can start putting in keyframes and make this kinematic and make my typography jump out. And so what I wanna do, I'm gonna start down with the first piece of text, which is the resolve piece here. And I'm gonna start way to the left here on the timeline. And the position here, I'm gonna to wanna to start it kind of off the page. I'm gonna animate this, so I'm gonna introduce a keyframe here by clicking this diamond to the right side here. Okay, so that's gonna start off the screen. I'm gonna key over using my right arrow button, and then I'm gonna bring this down, kinda of right on top of the text where it originally was. Okay, let's take a look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm coming in pretty fast there. And that's what I wanna do. So this, this kinematic movement is gonna create some movement of these elements below it. Now that I have my keyframes, you can see I can use this little element here to get to them. So I can go, I'm about on the second element there, and then I'm on the keyframe on the first element at timeline zero. That's an easy way to kind of scroll back and forth. That's in the edit page, it's the only way to really see your keyframe points. And I'm gonna show you a tip here in just a few minutes on how to look at those in more detail. You can see the points and move them around a lot easier. So right now, if we wanted to move something, you can just turn it off and there's no keyframe there and then create another one somewhere else, or you can edit it and then it's gonna move around to your new keyframe location. All right, so for this second element, we're gonna make this one kind of swing back and forth. So after this one gets hit by the top element, it's gonna swing back and forth. 
So to do that, uh, we've got to do a couple of different changes. And so first of all, we're not going to use the layout this time. We're going to use this transform to do that. And so there's a rotation option here. Just open up that box there. And also we want to look at, let's go back to the, the layout. I am going to want to use one thing because I want to overdo the perspective. And let me show you what that means. I'll, I'll turn it back to one. And so to pivot this, we can pivot it with this X here. But as you can see by default, our pivot point is right at the bottom there. And so in this case, I want to move it up here to the top. So let's go ahead and move this to point one. There we go. So now it's at the top of the text, so we can make that kind of swing. So you can see how this swings here. That looks pretty good, but I want to overdo that animation. I'm going to move this perspective up right around three. And now watch when I swing this. We really get kind of that movement kind of in 3D space. You can really see it stretch here at the base. So I think that's kind of cool. To start, what I want to do is I want to flatten this and kind of hide it. So it kind of disappears about right there. And so we'll make this a keyframe. We'll make it start swinging right when it hits, about right there. So one before it, I'll make a keyframe there. Okay, and I don't like how that line is in there. To me, that's kind of distracting. And I can get rid of that pretty easy. So what I want to do is go to the video tab up here on the top. And I have this opacity setting up here. So let's just go ahead and turn it down to zero. So I'm going to turn it down to zero there and next frame over, I'll turn it up to a hundred and I forgot to keyframe it. So there we go back to the fusion section of the, the settings here and I'm on the transform again right here at the top. So I'm going to start this animation here. Boom. And then we'll have it probably through the next six frames. I'm going to swing this up about like that. And then we'll go to there. You can see what I'm doing. Okay, my last one is there. And don't worry about getting these super precise. You can edit these in a little bit here. I'll show you a tip on that. But the next one, bring it back up here. And then we'll just end on zero there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rough animation that we did here. We placed all those keyframes in and it's going to look a little bit like this. All right, that doesn't look too bad. So we're going to make some final tweaks here and we're going to do that with the power of fusion and it's going to be really simple. So I'm going to show you the tips on that right now. So sometime between DaVinci Resolve 16.1 and 16.2, a new feature was added for Text Plus. And so now if we select a Text Plus clip, right click on it, and there's a new menu option here. It's called Open in Fusion Page, which is really cool. Go ahead and click that. We'll do that on the middle clip, which is the kinematic text line. And okay, we're now in Fusion. And don't get scared, this is really easy. So we've got some nodes here to work with. And it's gonna call that template, but we can see the text we're working with here. It's that kinematic text there. All we have is a simple media in, media out. I'm not going to add any notes to this, but we are going to utilize Fusion because it has some really cool animation features that don't show up in the edit page. And so if we click this keyframes, we can now see, and I'll open up this template here, you can see character angle. That's what we are animating and setting keyframes for. I'm gonna slide that over. Let's just zoom out a little bit here. If you wanna zoom more, you can use this as well. This will scroll it over. So we have these keyframes now that show up. And so we can see that that kinda rocks back and forth. If we wanna move any of those points, we can just slide them here and that's gonna change our animation. But if we get into the spline edit tools, we'll get even more options to make changes. I'm gonna go ahead and close that keyframes so we have more space here. Make sure that that character angle is selected. Now you can see the movement here of our angle. And so if we pull this along, you can see it's really sharp. Okay, so we go down here to the bottom, you can see that there's a select all option and that's going to select all of these curves here. Go ahead and click it there. So now we have all these lines selected. If I right click on one of these, these lines, we're going to get some menu options. You can see there's ease out, there's smoothing, and some of this is down here. We can do smoothing. 
We can do some other options down here, but what's not down there is this ease option. And so we have some options here, linear, in quadratic, but what I like to use is this dialog box here. And so we can see the curves that we're dealing with. So we can select everything as one here. So if we go in cubic, it's gonna look like that. Uh, we can do in out cubic, and that's gonna be something like that. So let's go ahead and select one of these and see what this looks like. And so you can see now we're gonna, in the middle, we're gonna go fast and then sharply back. This isn't what I want, but I just wanna give you an example here. So as we're rocking, it's gonna, gonna be slow in the middle and quick to change. And I really want these to be flat at the transition points. Go back to that ease tool again. In quadratic would be fine. Now I like the cubic. It's kind of gonna release slow, go in fast, release slow. And this looks better. I think this is gonna be a lot better. If you don't like any of these curve points, you have all these handles here and you can make manual adjustments to the curves. And when I wanna go back, I can just go ahead and hit the edit page. And all these changes I made in the Fusion page are gonna be saved on that clip in the timeline. So I can go and do the same thing on the next one here, the typography line here, right click on that, open in Fusion page, so that kind of speeds up your editing because um, the way I used to do this was put a couple of points in here to kind of simulate that slowdown point. And now that I can get in and use curves because of the new feature here, it's really great. Uh, I could do it before if I worked fully in Fusion. Obviously, I could get to these controls, but I think it's really great. We can do everything in the edit window here because this kind of sets our timeline. Then we can go in and do some tweaks in Fusion, which is really a super handy feature. I think for those of you migrating over from After Effects, I think this will be more familiar for you guys uh, where you're working in this timeline view. And then basically getting into those settings will be like the settings menus in After Effects. So that's really what we're doing in the Fusion page by right-clicking on these clips and then using the Open in Fusion page option. So hopefully you guys like that, and if you want my project here, the free version or the studio version, I did these separately. Obviously, you can't open one and the other, but I have both versions. So I'll put that out there. Uh, there's a link in the description below. Take a look for that. Hopefully you can do this yourself, but if you can't or you just want to check out what I did, go ahead and download those and load them in to your version of Resolve and take a look. So hopefully that helps you.